on this particular thing, at least on the heating part of it, not on the domestic side, because your groundwater in Chicago is always going to be coming in somewhere around 50 degrees. It might go up or down 5 or 10 degrees, whether you're in the middle of the summer or middle of the winter. But you're always going to be, on, on your normal hot water needs, domestic hot water, you're always going to have water that's below that 170, 170 degree feet going in, unless you have some type of solar heated hot water tank. Okay, so it's always going to condense, it's going to run at that 94-95% efficiency. So this thing here, you can get as much heat off this as you want, you just, it's simple, you just set the water temperature higher. But at some point, you're going to decrease the efficiency by a few percent if the return water temperature is too high. Now, I was talking to the engineer at GTI, the other contractor for some reason um, has his water temperature set at 160 degrees, and he was telling me that based on all their meters and that, that he was getting about 88% efficiency out of it. So, you know, not 95%, but for someone setting it that high with that higher return water temperature, pretty impressive that he was still getting it, and, that, and that's a real life test. So, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to turn this on. We're, the, our water temperature here is set for 125. Billy's going to take a reading of the water coming in and the water going out, just to show you the temperature drop in between. And then he's also going to take a temperature and, you know, the temperature of the air. So if the water temperature in the water coil is 125, you're probably going to be somewhere between 115 and 120 air. Now, the reason why that's important is a normal scorched air type of system, what would you say the normal temperature should be, Billy, off of the, off of the plenum? Well, depending on the efficiency of the furnace and your proper airflow setting, I mean, it could be anywhere from you know 120 to 150 degrees. Right. You know, depending on the system and the size. So basically, this thing runs at a little higher CFM, 1600 CFMs. Geothermal works the same way. So it's a little, it's a little cooler. It's not cold air because it's about it's going to be about 120 degree air when when Billy shows you the actual reading. So it's still warm air going through it, but because it's not quite as hot as the traditional, you know, burner compartment in that, you, it runs a little higher CFM, so it circulates the air. It just runs a little longer, but it still gets you to that temperature you need. And actually, by running a little longer, it kind of, it, it helps mix the hot air from upstairs and the cold air from downstairs. It actually makes the house a little more comfortable. So it's kind of a little longer more gentler type of heat than just turning on a blast furnace real real quick and shutting it down. So you will notice if you're familiar with traditional heating and air that the temperatures on this are going to be lower than what you would get off of a a combustible you know with combustion burners and your typical heat exchanger in there. But um, that's part of why this it's not just because the other coil. That's part of why this runs at that 1600 CFM. That just it produces uh, more air. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to turn this on your hair kick on. I'm going to let Billy take over. He's going to go show your measurements. The key to this is at 125, I want to make sure that this is going back below 107, right? Because if it, as long as it's going back between 107, then it should be running at peak efficiency. You can you can have it go back. You can set this up to 160, you know. If you needed to, and it, it'll it'll get you more heat out, but the return temperature is not going to be below that magic 107, and it's not going to condensate. Again, the real world test that they're doing on the other one, he must have had a bigger house. He must he must not have been us. I think he sized it wrong. Um, he uh, for whatever reason they they and they have all these gauges in there. They say he's running at 160. But he's still getting, even though he's got a higher return temperature on the water than the 107, he's still getting somewhere around 88% efficiency, which is very impressive actually. So without further ado, we'll go to the Ecobee. I'm going to turn it on, and then Billy's going to um, take some measurements and explain a few things to you. And uh, let's see. All right, so currently it's 65, it's set for 59. I'm going to set it for 68 and you're going to hear it kick on and then Billy will start taking the measurements. Okay? Okay, it's just kicking on now. We'll wait for the blower to come on and we'll uh, give it a couple minutes here to kind of balance out. 